Hello, welcome to the Pico trade show stand in my home office. Not very big, not very expensive, but more than enough to demonstrate the whole of the Picoscope 9400 SXRTO family to you. And that's what we'll do, uh, looking at uh, pulse and impulse measurements uh, using all four of the products here. Okay, so I've got my 49400 set up here. I've got the two 16 gigahertz models on the bottom and the five gigahertz models on the top. I'm driving them from a PG911, that's our 50 picosecond differential fast edge generator. And then I'm using this rather elaborate arrangement of delay lines to define a couple of pulses for you. One's around 70 picosecond, that's defined by this little extra delay I've got in here. And then this uh, cable over the top here, that defines a 2.7 nanosecond pulse. And here they are on the screen for you. Um, okay, so that uh, 70 picosecond pulse is looking pretty good. Um, let me get these measurements up for you to a larger scale so you can see those. There we are, something like 70 picoseconds uh, uh, on that uh, narrow pulse. I've got a little bit more uh, jitter in the, uh, in the negative edges on these pulses. That's because there's some differential uh, jitter between the two outputs here. I'm triggering on a positive edge in this system. Uh, and so I've got a little bit more jitter in the negative edge. Um, but there you are, some pretty, uh, pretty stable measurements uh, on, these, uh, on these two pulses. Let's get a closer look at that uh, narrow pulse. Uh, let's add a zoom zone. Let's give ourselves a factor of 20, move that along. And then we can uh, get a, a bit of a more detailed view. We can fine move that along. Let's... Um, Give ourselves some vertical scaling on this as well. Oops, a bit too much. There we go, up there like that. Okay, so um, there's a, a zoomed in look at our, um, at our edges as well. Now, if we take a look at the, uh, the scaling here, um, I've got 50 picoseconds per division on this zoom trace to the right. Um, 500 picosecond per division on the left, as we said, there's a scaling factor of 10 between the two. Of course, if we want to see more detail of what's going on, then of course we might have to move across to our four channel model. And this is the four channel 16 gigahertz model. And uh, just for your own comparison, I'm going to bring up these, uh, all these measurements on this model. And I think you're going to agree we've got considerable, considerable match between uh, the two units, uh, both in terms of measurements and in terms of uh, pulse response. While we're here, let's um, demonstrate the, um, the Pico Connect probes. Um, let's take this connection off here using my very handy Pico wrench. Absolutely ideal for all RF engineers that had to design one, couldn't buy one. Let's put the probe in instead. This is our uh, this is our Pico Connect 9 gigahertz probe, DC coupled. And then we need to probe this terminated line as carefully as we can. Let's see if I can get a connection into that. So this is the waveform you get off a Pico Connect probe. This is uh, divided by five, so it's twice as big as the um, that waveform we were looking at before, which was directly via an 18 gig uh, 20 dB pad. Um, pretty good pulse response there, and uh, what we've got uh, full time of the order of what, 70 picoseconds or so. There we go. Of course, budget constraints might drive us down to the 
5 gigahertz model. So I thought we'd take a look at how the 5 gigahertz model measures that 70 picosecond pulse. And <laughs> really, it's not bad at all, is it? You can see there is a little bit lower amplitude uh, than we had before. You'll also notice that we've got a lower time base here. So uh, the 5 gigahertz model doesn't quite have the uh, same effective um, or equivalent uh, sampling rate as the 16 gigahertz model. So we've dropped from 2.5 tera samples per second down to one tera sample per second. And that, in this case, has forced my uh, main time base uh, down to uh, 1.25 nanoseconds per division. But nevertheless, if we zoom in on the measurements here, uh, we can see that the unit uh, is making a, a fairly good fist of these, uh, of these uh, measurements, uh, perhaps a little bit more jitter. Um, rice times and fall times a little bit slower, uh, but really not bad at all. Uh, let's uh, call our zoom traces up again. We need to put a bit more magnification factor on to get back to our So there we go. We're back to um, 50 picoseconds per division as we had before on the uh, on the other unit uh, on the 16 gigahertz unit. And uh, in order to do that, I've had to use a magnification factor of uh, 25. Um, I think if uh, some of you have got uh, very high resolution monitors, you may be able to see that there's a, a few little gaps in that waveform there. That's because we now don't have quite enough points to fill all of the samples on this um, 4K monitor. Uh, there you are, one or two pixels missing in that blue trace on the 4K, on the 4K image here. But, but hey. That's not bad at all for a 70 picosecond pulse. We can also use skew on here. If I just add 20 picoseconds to that pulse, so that's now a 90 picosecond pulse, uh, you can see I'm up to the amplitude thereabouts that I had before. Uh, so certainly at a uh, 100 picosecond pulse, let's do that. There you are. It's a 100 picosecond pulse now. Let's get the measurement on that. Another advantage, of course, of running at the slightly lower sample rate uh, is that um, we can speed up the, the measurements somewhat here. And as soon as I've got 50 measurements, I start to get my uh, jitter results as well. And there you go. So this is a much faster running measurement that we're doing at one tera sample per second than we would have been at uh, 2.5 tera sample per second, simply because we're processing le less data and fewer acquisitions of our repeated waveform to, um, to make up this image. So one final quick demonstration here. Um, and we haven't used the four channel five gigahertz product yet. So I've connected that up, um, four channels, but I'm only going to use one of them to do one final, very important demonstration that the SXRTO, the sampler extended real time oscilloscope is very different from the traditional sampling scope. And the first difference is that I've only got one connection made to the front panel and I've already got a live signal because I am triggering off that one channel. There is a, in, an internal trigger pickoff, which you wouldn't normally find on a, a sampling scope. Uh, let's get time base going a little bit faster. There we go. And uh, this is the same 100 picosecond pulse that we've been using for some time. Uh, and I want to show you that by zooming the readouts at the top of the picture here, um, that the trigger rate is being measured at 999 kilohertz or about a megahertz. Um, this is the trigger rate that we've been using for all of the uh, demonstrations so far. We can 
uh, just as easily trigger off the negative edge as we can trigger off the positive edge. Uh, and in doing that, you can see pre-trigger information, information before the trigger event, which is currently sitting at 10% uh, in the first division on that little T at the bottom of the screen there, indicates the trigger position. So we can see pre-trigger data, which we wouldn't be able to see on a sampling oscilloscope. In fact, you can't even see the trigger on a sampling oscilloscope only some period beyond the trigger. Let's put that back to positive. So this is a uh, 100 picosecond pulse, something a bit less than 100 picoseconds actually. What's that? Oh yeah, almost exactly 100 picosecond pulse. Um, one of the uh, regular applications um, is the low repetition rate pulse. Um, notoriously difficult for a sampling oscilloscope to deal with uh, because of the time uncertainty of the next pulse. Yeah, or it's difficult for a sampling scope to trigger on one pulse and then capture the second. But we don't do that with a sampler extended uh, oscilloscope. And we can demonstrate that by reducing the trigger rate We can see uh, at the top of the screen there, uh, we can see in our readout, we are indeed now triggering at 10 kilohertz. Um, I just want to clear the screen. The update rate now is a little bit slower uh, because we need lots and lots of repet repetitions to build up our picture. And once we've got 50 waveforms, we will begin to get jitter uh, measurements for this pulse as well. Uh, and you can see here that despite the very low repetition rate of the pulse, we are able to make as a measurement as just as good as we were previously. No additional jitter in this uh, pulse um, uh, due to uh, immense trigger delay that we might associate with a sampling scope. So there you are, the Picoscope 9400 SXRTOs, 5 and 16 gigahertz, 4 and 2 channel, as applied to pulse measurements. Let me give you my card, and if you need any further assistance, do please call.